Okay, we're going to do some extra practice for finding the slope of the line. First of all, we have some pictures. It looks like we have four graphs here that we're going to find practice finding the slope from the graph. So that's going to require us to identify some points and make some triangles so we can count, rise, and run. So first of all, I can see that I can use these intercepts as points. I'm going to make a triangle between the intercepts. Now, the intercepts won't work if your line isn't crossing right on a tick mark. So it is, it is crossing. You can see the line is crossing right at negative 3 here and at negative 3 here. So this triangle will work. All right, again, remember that when your line is going downhill, this, if it's your bank account, it makes you sad. This is a negative slope. So the slope for this line, first off, is going to be negative. And then we're going to count the rise is the vertical. So this rise is three units high. The run is the horizontal. And slope is rise over run. The run is horizontal. So the run here is three units long. So we have a fraction of negative three over three. We always need to simplify or reduce these fractions. This fraction reduces to make negative one. This is a slope of negative one. On number two, um, our line this time is going uphill. If this is your bank account, it makes you happy. This is a slope of positive. This is a positive slope. So we'll put a plus sign here. Even though you know you're not required to write the plus sign, I'm going to write it just so that I remember that I already thought about it. And again, you can use the intercepts here. But it looks like the line is actually crossing at positive 2 here and at negative 4 here. So this is okay, and we're going to make a triangle between these two points. All right, the rise is vertical. This rise is too high. So the rise of the slope here is two. The run is horizontal. So it looks like the length of this run is four. So this is a slope of two over four. Again, always, always, always simplifying our fraction. So this is a slope. When we simplify two over four, we get one half. we go to the, the third graph, it looks like this is a case where it doesn't look like our line actually crosses the x-axis right at a good point. I don't know. I, I kind of think it does. So I don't, I don't understand why the author put these on here for us because it looks to me like we can still use the intercepts here. We might need to enlarge the picture though. Can we enlarge it? Sure we can. All right, so let's draw a little triangle between our intercepts just like that. All right, this is an uphill line, so this is a positive slope. So the rise is one, the run is also one, when we simplify it, we get a slope of 1. Okay, when we go to this graph, again, I'm going to use my intercepts here. You can't always use the intercepts, only if your line is actually crossing at a tick mark. Some other times, it's, it's nice on these graphs because there's no uh, grid marks. Some other times you might have to use other different grid marks. We can use our intercepts here. If I draw a triangle between them, just like that, it looks like the rise is 2. So the rise is 2. I don't have room to write. There we go. The rise is 2. The run is how long does that run? Four. So we have, again, a fraction of two over four, which reduces to make one half. All right, below these graphs, we have a short word problem similar to the one we did in the lesson. So let's read it. It says, to join an online video game website, you need to pay a one-time registration fee of $20 
and 150 per hour to use the website. What's the equation for the cost of joining the website where y is the total cost and x is the number of hours on the website? So if y is going to be the total cost, we're going to start with y equals. All right, we have to pay $1.50 per hour. So that would be 1.5 times x, $1.50 per hour, plus the extra $20 one-time registration fee. So y equals 1.5 times x plus 20. What's the slope in this situation? The slope is the number that's making the change. So when, as the hours are changing, this 1.5 is making this amount all change. So the slope is the 1.5. You will always find it right here as a coefficient in front of x. So the slope is 1.5 or $1.50. You can write it either way. Explain the slope in the context of this situation. Uh, what that means is for every month, or every hour, I'm sorry, this is in hours, for every hour, you're using the website, this cost is changing by 1.5. All right, on the next page, we're going to uh, practice using the slope formula. So find the slope given these points. So 3, 7, and 2, 10. So this is implying that there's a line that goes through these two points, and we are being asked to figure what the slope of that line is. You can actually draw the graph if you wish, and count out the slope just like we did in the, on the previous page, or you can plug these points into the slope formula, which is how I'm going to do it right now. So let's enlarge this a little bit. Let's mark these points as x1, x1, y1, x2, y2. Wow, I'm having trouble with this pen. All right, we're going to fit them into the formula. y2 minus y1 is going to be 10 minus 7 in the numerator. So 10 minus 7. x2 minus x1 is going to be 2 minus 3 in the denominator. So 2 minus 3. We simplify that. 10 minus 7 in the numerator, we get 3. 2 minus 3 in the denominator gives us negative 1. Simplifying fractions, 3 divided by negative 1 makes negative 3. So this is going to be a slope of negative 3. In the next one, find the slope given these two points. Again, x1, y1, x2, y2. When we fit them in, y2 minus y1 it's going to be negative 7 minus negative 5. Be careful with the negatives. Negative 7 minus negative 5. And in the denominator, x2 minus x1 will be negative 6 minus 3. Negative 6 minus 3. Simplifying, we get, well, don't forget these two minuses. Negative 7 plus 5 makes negative 2. Six minus three makes negative nine. And again, simplifying, even though the two and the nine will not reduce, these negatives will. So we simplify this to make a positive two ninths. And the line that goes through these two points will have a slope of positive two ninths. All right, here's a fun one with some fractions in it. Find the slope given the points one half, negative four, and two, three. So again, we're going to mark them as x1, y1, x2, y2. It just keeps us from being confused when we put them into the formula. y2 minus y1 is going to be 6 minus negative 4. So 6 minus negative 4 over x2, well, x2 minus x1. So, two-thirds, two-thirds minus one-half. Okay. Well, six minus negative four is six plus four, and that makes ten. Two-thirds minus one-half is going to be a little bit trickier. So, 
So let's see if we actually have room here because we can't subtract them without a common denominator. We can write this off to the side somewhere. The common denominator for 3 and 2 is 6. So we're going to change these to sixths. All right, 3 times 2 makes 6. So 2 times 2 will give us 4 sixths in the numerator of this fraction. Okay, 1 half, 2 times 3 makes 6, so 1 times 3 is 3. So I have 4 sixths minus 3 sixths. That gives me 10 divided by 1 6. Okay, this is not simplified. Cannot give a ratio as 10 divided by a fraction. This is what we call a complex fraction. So we're going to take that and we're going to rewrite it out as 10 divided by 1 6. And the rule for dividing fractions is keep the fraction, change to multiply, use the reciprocal or flip the second fraction well, the reciprocal of 1 sixth is 6. So this turns into 10 times 6. This is a slope of 60 for a line that goes through these two points. We'll have a slope of 60. All right, so let's look at these graphs. We're going to practice some horizontal and vertical lines here. This equation says graph x equals 3. That means go to 3 on the x-axis and make a line. So this will be a vertical. It goes through x equals 3, just like that. And this has a slope that's undefined. Graph x equals 0. And we graphed this one before in the lesson. x is 0 right here at the origin. So the graph of x equals 0 is a vertical line right on the y-axis. Just like that. And it has a slope also of uh, undefined. Vertical lines have a slope undefined. Ooh. Graph y equals negative 4. This one's a little bit different because now it's y equals instead of x equals. So on the y-axis, negative 4, going through negative 4 will give us a horizontal line. So this is going to be a horizontal line right here. Horizontal lines have a slope of 0. And number 12, graph y equals 5. We're going to go up to 5 on the y-axis, and this is going to be a horizontal line through y equals 5. Just like that. With a slope of 0. Uh, 